Hi, I'm William SRD, and I'm reporting to you live from inside the Wendy's Metaverse. So, as you can no doubt tell, the Wendy's marketing team has been largely completely out of control for the last several years. And one of the most relevant things they did for our community was that in 2019, they released a tabletop role-playing game called Wendy's Feast of Legend that was essentially a gigantic shitpost. So this is only the... Can, can I make... This is only the second episode of Meme Systems. But I'm already breaking the format to present to you this particular video. Because if we're talking about Wendy's Feast of Legends, the most interesting thing to talk about is not the system itself, but actually the controversy associated with it. Oh, am I looking at the camera? Yes, I'm looking at the camera. The controversy, of course, referring to the time when Critical Ro Ooh. The time that Critical Role played the game, and it caused such a kerfuffle that they had to take the video down the very next day. However, I don't really want to leave you without any coverage of the system at all, so we're just gonna quickly go through that, and then we'll get into the controversy. If you are not interested in hearing about the actual system, then make use of the timestamps below. So this is where we usually end these videos. But before I rate, let me tell you a little bit about the system itself. First of all, this thing is absurdly high effort. It's to the point where the effort put into the system actually becomes part of the joke. This thing is 100 pages of sensible and functional rules, ridiculously good art, and a pre-made campaign that's built to last 5 plus sessions. The system feels very much like a variant of 5th edition D&D, albeit a very well-made variant. The module is, uh, well, I mean, it's fine. It's very linear, and it's also clearly a gigantic five session long Wendy's ad. And frankly, I reckon that would get old after the first hour. So with that in mind, if the humor of the system is that it exists, then that would make it a C tier meme at best. However, there is the complexity of just how well made this thing is. You might think that that would set the joke apart, but when we dig deeper into it, the actual quality that went into the design and the art and the assets, those things actually don't translate into things that help the game very much. They mostly translate into stuff that assists the initial joke. The joke has altered slightly. It's no longer that, hey, there's a Wendy's RPG, it's there's a Wendy's RPG, and it's really well made. And don't get me wrong, that's a funny joke. There's a lot of people in the RPG space who haven't heard of this game, and if you tell them about it, they will be giggling for a full five minutes while they do the googling. And that built-in humor will carry into the game a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's more of a novelty that won't last in your gameplay for very long. So with that in mind, I can't in good conscience rate this thing any higher than C tier. However, we'll remember that it's kind of top of C tier. Because the joke is that it exists, but it's a very good joke. Okay, but without further ado, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and let's move on to the controversy. Hey there, before we get too far into it, uh, I just want to address that in a weird coincidence, uh, there was a major r slash hobby drama post about this uh, whole controversy that came out on like Monday this week. It's kind of just a weird coincidence that it's coming out the exact same week I'm doing this. Uh, but as you can see from my other shots in this, uh, when I was wearing a different shirt and stuff, uh, I recorded all that stuff last week. You can see that I'm wearing the same shirt as I was in my Furby video. So just to verify, all of this was written and everything before that post came out. And I'm making that explicit just because of the fact that we're covering like 95% of the same information. On October 3rd of 2019, Sam Regal hosted a Wendy's Feast of Legend one-shot for Critical Role. Starting pretty much immediately after it was announced, all the way up until the game was played, there was pretty much immediate backlash, uh, mostly in regards to the sheer blatantness of the sponsorship, 
and also the ethical concerns with partnering up with Wendy's as a corporation. Some fans pin this whole thing on Sam Regal, pointing out that Matt Mercer seemed uncomfortable the entire episode, but regardless, soon after Matt Mercer posted an apology about the whole event. The VOD was taken off of Twitch the day after airing, and the whole thing ends up kind of ranking a little bit low on the scale of critical role controversies. Now, I tend to find when I look into a lot of these stories that the community memory is a little bit different compared to what actually happened, and we are running into that a little bit here. See, because what had been recounted to me over and over before I looked into it was that Critical Role was cancelled for playing Wendy's Feast of Legends, but that... That's just not what happened. No, no, they actually got in trouble for being sponsored by Wendy's Feast of Legends. And that distinction is actually a bigger one than you might think. To determine the number for your stats, roll 4d4s. We call this roll a 4 for $4. Nailed it. Now, if you're playing at home with a group of friends and you come across stuff like that, well, that's kind of funny, because the joke is that you're playing this game that is a gigantic and blatant ad. But if you are playing this game before a live audience and Wendy's is paying you to play it, there's no joke anymore. It's just an advertisement. And remember that the entire system is like this. So basically, Critical Role posted a four hour long ad read. So a lot of people who support the show financially were pretty upset that they pay Critical Role money to put out episodes and they got back an advertisement instead. There's also the unfortunate implication of the fact that it's almost certain that when Wendy's was designing this thing, they had it in mind to bait Critical Role into playing it, and Critical Role had taken the bait hook, line, and sinker, and essentially, in many people's minds, just showed corporations how easily they could be baited and manipulated into doing advertising for them. I should say that the episode itself wasn't too bad. I actually found certain parts of the episode very funny. You'll be competing against me, and we are just going to do this. Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> you have the biggest mouth of anybody! This game of chubby bunny ever. Four. Six. Eight. Oh. Oh. Eight. Oh. Eight. Oh. Yeah, boy. <laughs> However, the blatantness of the sponsorship and posting a four hour long ad was not the entirety of the controversy. Posting a video like that was already flawed as a basic premise. However, to make it worse, it was for the benefit of Wendy's, and Wendy's has some severe ethical concerns about it. See, in recent years, US farmers have began to protect their workers' rights through banding together as part of the Fair Food Program. Wendy's stands alone as the last of the five major fast food corporations in the country to refuse to join the FFP. McDonald's, Burger King, Yum Brands, and Subway are all doing the right thing by participating in the program. By refusing to join, Wendy's is deriving a very real cost advantage over its competitors, while continuing to provide an alternative market for less reputable growers. So to avoid paying a few extra pennies for their food costs to protect workers' rights, they instead shifted their food production into Mexico. They then turned that money saved into an advertising budget which they could use to be funny on Twitter and distract people from their ethical problems. So, Critical Role ran a giant ad, and it also turned out to be for a very unethical company. That's bad enough, but it doesn't quite end there. Critical Role has generally cultivated a fairly progressive image for themselves, coming out in support of Black Lives Matter and LGBTQ plus issues, which led to many people pointing out the hypocrisy of Critical Role holding these beliefs while also taking money from and doing advertisements for Wendy's, who have a CEO who was one of the largest donors to the Donald Trump presidential campaign. Okay, but 
When I was doing all the fact checking on the major narratives in this video, I found out that that story is actually a lot more complicated than the original Twitter backlash made it out to be. Surprise, surprise, Twitter was lacking some nuance. The initial fact that was given was that the CEO of Wendy's was a major donor for Donald Trump. It's fiction. We made it up. We made this one up. It's a made up tale. However, the truth may be just as bad, possibly worse. Now from between 2019 to 2020, there was a false fact circulating around the internet that the CEO of Wendy's had donated $400,000 to the Trump campaign. That number, when you track it back, seems to refer to James Bodenstedt, who was not and is not the CEO of Wendy's. He was, however, the president of Moy Brands, which is a large holding company that runs a large number of Wendy's franchises, but is not otherwise uh, integrated into the corporate structure of Wendy's itself. Basically, he's not in charge of Wendy's, he just owns a bunch of individual Wendy's restaurants. So there we go. Case closed, right? This was a false fact, this didn't happen, critical rolls off the hook. Not this time. Wendy's put out a statement in 2020 that was worded very specifically. We never have and will never contribute to a presidential campaign. For the record, our CEO has always kept that same energy too. Facts. We'll get into that in a second, but first, in order to understand exactly what this statement leaves out, we're going to have to zoom out a little bit and talk about another major figure in the company. Nelson Peltz is a billionaire, and while he is not the CEO of Wendy's, he is the president of the board and the top owner of the company. And by all accounts that I've read, he's a very hands-on kind of owner. In 2020, Peltz ran a fundraising campaign for Donald Trump's presidential campaign out of his own home that raised an estimated $10 million for Trump's campaign. And I know what you might be thinking. One of the major owners has a strong political bias, but that doesn't mean the whole corporation does. Except in this particular case, Yes, it does. Maybe you are or aren't aware of it, but Wendy's has gotten pretty famous for its attitude and its clapbacks on Twitter. Well, the architect behind that social media strategy was Amy Brown. Amy Brown is no longer working for Wendy's, and she came forward to dispute the claim that Wendy's did not donate to presidential campaigns, suggesting that while they were technically telling the truth that they had never donated to presidential campaigns, the company was very politically active and had a very strong right-leaning bent to it. Because Wendy's apparently has a PAC, and they strongly encourage all of their staffers to donate to this PAC. So what is a PAC? Is a question that I should not have to be answering on my YouTube channel about Dungeons and Dragons. The short working answer to what a PAC is that we need for today is that it stands for a political action committee, and essentially they take donations from their members and donate that to targeted political campaigns to achieve whatever outcomes they are looking to get. So, this PAC, have they ever donated to a presidential campaign? No, they have not. However, how is it that they spend their money? Well, it looks a little bit like this. Okay, okay, we are way, way in the weeds here, and we don't need to go any further down this road. The point of it is that Wendy's is a pretty provably Republican-aligned party, and Critical Role being more of a left-wing progressive sort of group, well, it's pretty hypocritical for them to be taking Wendy's money. And pretty much wherever you land on the political spectrum, hypocrisy is worth criticism. Okay, so what we've determined at this point is that there is certainly cause to criticize critical role. However, the question is, I mean, just how bad is this thing? And that's very much going to vary based off of your beliefs and values. So for me, this controversy is only bad enough to be a very good 
teachable moment for Critical Role to learn that they need to be pretty careful with who they're taking sponsorships from. I think the criticism they got was totally warranted, and I'm really glad that Matt apologized about the whole thing. Uh, also, I do know a few people, even other YouTubers, who have heard of Wendy's Feast of Legends and are very interested in playing it because it sounds funny, uh, and they're kind of hand-wringing a little bit because uh, Critical Role got in a lot of trouble for playing it. But remember, Critical Role didn't get in trouble for playing it, they got in trouble for being sponsored by it. So I think if you want to play it at home, or if you are one of those other YouTubers and you wanted to play it on a stream sometime, I think you're totally okay. Anyway, after this whole thing, we got the apology, and we can all breathe a little easier, knowing that Critical Role has learned their lesson to not get in bed with evil corporations. Thank you all so much for watching today, and I will see you all next week when I will be covering an actual normal meme system in which we will be providing normal system coverage. However, if you do like it when I get a little bit more investigative, then I would recommend you click on this video here, which covers the time that the American Secret Service raided an RPG company. And I would also recommend that you like and subscribe to the channel, because in about two weeks I'm going to be covering the satanic panic in a lot of depth. Okay, give me your clapbacks in the comments, and I will see you all next week.